So I am Luc Mare. I, I am working at CALT here in France. So it's a national big uh, R&D center. And we work, we start to work on LiFi, let's say five years ago, uh, when we developed one of the first um, real time LiFi modem with about 20 megabits per second and also a multi-cell interference management just uh, uh, in the way that it was presented uh, in the previous sessions. And now we are proceeding uh, towards more um, advanced research on optical uh, communications uh, at the transmitter sites um, dealing with the optical source. So that's the topic of my presentation. Um, uh, trying to enhance again the performance of one single blue uh, micro LEDs. So the outline is the following after a few words about the motivation. I will talk about um, the, the way we um, reach our results. And then I will uh, give a few words about conclusions uh, before uh, talking uh, about our perspectives um, here in CA. So. Well, I, about our motivations, I will not teach you a lot uh, today. Well, Li-Fi can be seen as the internet using LED lighting. So it's a, a promising technology for very high data rate uh, wireless access. What it, it can also be seen as a complementary technology for, uh, let's say, conventional radio frequency cellular systems. I mean, 5G or Wi-Fi. Um, which can face spectrum congestions, but also at the end we got the advantages of the optical communications. I mean, zero uh, RF electromagnetic emissions, but also uh, uh, quite good sensitivity to such interferences. So um, quickly at, at Leti, uh, as everyone, we end up with the conclusion that um, one of the bottleneck in LIFA system for very high data rate was on the optical sources. And actually uh, the commercial LIFA solutions are using uh, off the shelves LED lightings, which are not primarily optimized for communication. So we are observing bandwidth uh, limited to roughly 10 megahertz. And, and, and throughputs limited to a few hundreds of megabits. So what we decided to look after in CA is to introduce the um, gallium nitride micro LEDs into our uh, transmission um, studies. So uh, it's not new. Um, since uh, 2015, there, is, uh, there have been uh, already several demonstrations using smaller and smaller um, micro LEDs up to, uh, let's say, 21 micrometer side lengths. And it, um, the state of the art right now was um, uh, about 5 gigabits per second um, in the blue wavelengths and uh, nearly 8 gigabits per second in violet wavelengths. And the bandwidth uh, was uh, measured up to several hundreds of uh, megahertz. And um, on the other side here in CLT, uh, since a few years, we, we are developing among the smallest micro LED uh, in the world, I mean, up to one uh, micrometers. So we 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 were um, really uh, kind to uh, mix our uh, expertise and, and try to integrate them in, in um, optical communication. So for us, this um, works on um, on single micro LEDs are only a first steps in our roadmaps. So we want um, um, to, you know, in the first step to uh, get a better understanding of the uh, behavior of such micro LEDs in the high frequency regime, trying to also get their best performance. But the second step is to go to, towards matrices. So today, um, it deals with single micro LEDs in the blue wavelengths. And this is the different patterns that we have uh, tested um, uh, here in CA. So we were able to have different sizes and, and shapes uh, under test. So these were um, micro LEDs that was, uh, were primarily uh, designed for uh, micro displays. And the best performance was reached on, uh, on, on the square times time uh, times micrometers, uh, square micrometers, a single blue uh, LEDs. So you can see um, on the bottom pictures that uh, this uh, LED wa was uh, were already addressed uh, uh, within matrix and we were able to have let's say five uh, different LEDs, uh, you can see on the bottom right pictures with uh, remote pads. So this kind of um, uh, components were 
uh, driven by uh, intensity modulation because you know it it is uh, imposed by the current LED light. So we are using the conventional uh, Li-Fi way to to modulate the LED. I mean, we get a digital waveform generation. We go through a, a converter to uh, get in the analog domain for amplification, but uh, also for um, a bias T uh, for DC um, addition to get a unipolar waveform. And all this um, modulation is sent towards a very high speed photo receiver. So we implemented the, um, the IFDM waveform with um, bit and power loading. So it's known to reach very high spectral efficiency by adapting the, the transmission to the frequency, uh, frequency response of the LED. So on, on the bottom left, you can see um, the channel capacity that was estimated at the receiver. Uh, so you can see we can reach um, about 10 bits uh, uh, per uh, subcarrier, and and um, also the bandwidth um, used for modulation was up to 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, so it's quite um, um, uh, huge. Um, on the bottom right, you can see that we were also um, adapting the energy loading on each uh, subcarrier again to get a uh, uh, more uh, homogeneous PTR rate on, on the wall uh, frequency band. So here is the experimental setup that we um, built here uh, in CA. So we got a very high bandwidth instruments and well, only the optical uh, uh, transmission was done in real time. And we get the uh, digital waveform generated in software and transmitted by a, um, a high speed generator. Uh, then we got an amplifier a bias T and we were um, trying to uh, feed the signal uh, as close as possible of the LED thanks to uh, high speed uh, RF probe that you can see on the, on the bottom uh, left pictures here. So after we were trying to collect as much as possible light um, with microscope objectives, uh, marrow and, and lens towards the uh, commercially available photo receiver, um, which got a, a bandwidth of um, only 1.4 uh, gigahertz. And then uh, we got uh, digital scope for acquisitions and the reception algorithm was done also in software for uh, conventional uh, OFDM demodulation. So here is um, a table of parameters uh, for two different size of LEDs. I mean, 10 micrometers and 120. I, I will not go into details uh, of each figures, but what you should remember is, is the for the 10 micrometers LED is the DC bias that we um, used to get the highest uh, modulation bandwidth. So it's 25.5 uh, milliampers. So it's, it gives a current density of let's say 25 kiloamperes per square centimeter. So it's quite high. And this is one of the key enabler um, to get very high throughputs uh, compared to the uh, previous state of the art with um, which was applying only uh, 19 um, kiloamperes per square meters on the um, 20 micrometers uh, LEDs. And the second figure uh, is the bandwidth um, because we succeed to modulate at up to 1.8 gigahertz. Um, so all this uh, gives this uh, main result. So here is the frequency response of these two um, LEDs. So we can see that we were about 20 megahertz for the 120 micrometers um, micro LEDs and we reach uh, about 200 uh, megahertz for the 10 micro uh, GAN LEDs. So all this um, frequency response is, is um, um, in fact, for, from the wall system, but we try to uh, implement uh, um, different instruments with larger um, bandwidth so that we can um, estimate that this is the frequency response uh, of the LED, except uh, for the bandwidth of the photo receiver that was um, limited to 1.4 gigahertz. So this is the last slide on, on the results. So uh, here we are um, displaying the data rate function of the beta rate. So um, in red is reported the state of the art uh, in single blue uh, uh, LEDs um, and, and blue, it's uh, the performance that we reach with our 
um, 10 micrometers LED. So you, you can see that at the reference bit rate, uh, we reach 7.7 .7 gigabits um, um, per second. So it's um, a quite uh, a noticeable increase of the performance. So it's mainly due to the smaller size for a reduced uh, parasitol capacitance, but also a higher current density. But you can also see that 10 gigabits per second can be reached with a higher bit rate. So um, concerning the, the perspective in, in CA, so, well, this work is on single um, um, single micro -LED. So we all know that there is a low optical power and a limited efficiency, but there is already potential application for such single micro -LEDs. Uh, I mean, we can have very short range commutation, less than one millimeters, uh, where we have uh, some potential for optical communication, for instance, in rotary joint, for industry or in space. And if we want to go for larger range application, and um, for instance, indoor wireless access, we are looking here in CA uh, of um, forward uh, matrices. So for us, this is um, the, the most uh, interesting um, way to get uh, a larger range applications. So it will not offer uh, a new way to, to pilot uh, thousands of uh, uh, micro optical source, but we will we'll also have the opportunity to to implement a kind of digital to optical communications so to, to go again deeper in the integration of the system into a, um, a smaller um, chips. And then we can also have some kind of optical uh, beamforming to uh, replace the not so efficient time division uh, multiple access uh, by a, a kind of special division multiple access. So my last slide just uh, describe this this view. Here was the the conventional Li-Fi that we were applying on on the single LED. So what we would like to implement is what we call digital to light transmission, where we remove the digital to analog converters and and the biases, and then we just uh, come uh, to pilot the micro LED matrix um, directly with the digital waveforms. And the second. A step will be the integration of the CMOS pixelized uh, current drive by hybridization of the of this CMOS onto the micro LED arrays, and, and the last uh, step will be the integration of an optical system to get the SDNA uh, features. So we are already um, using uh, a, a matrix here in CA with more than ten thousand pixels, and and we are. Uh, waiting for the next step, I mean, the, the integration of the current drives. So that's all from my side. I thank you everyone for your attention. If you have any question or, or remarks, you can uh, contact me.